Hello, Karen O'Loughlin here. We are going to do a tutorial on unit testing in Visual C Sharp, and we're going to use the Visual Studio Community Environment. This is actually a, a second video on unit testing. My first video, um, if you look for it, is using the walkthrough, creating and running a unit test for managed code from Microsoft and the docs. In that video, we also talked about the advantages of unit testing, which I will mention here. Um, these advantages do come from um, a gentleman that I use online, and I'll give you references to that. Um, and so, uh, finding bugs early, development time is reduced, uh, reducing bugs during production, um, especially if you're working on, um, well, it actually allows you to understand code, especially when debugging someone else's code. Uh, the comment I was just going to make was if you're you're trying to fix or work on somebody's legacy code, I know companies that go back and build unit tests for legacy code because it then helps them when they are putting that code back into production after they have to fix it or make adjustments. It also provides a manner for documenting, and to me it also helps with understanding somebody's design process. If you can look at their unit tests, you can actually understand how somebody maybe is thinking about that process, and it makes it easier to change code and refactor. The second example that I'm going to do is going to be based upon the tutorials by um, the the YouTube uh, side is Kud Venkat, but it's uh, Mr. Venkat is the man's name. And um, he has a series of YouTube videos, and I've linked them in here. I believe I'll be able to um, link this PowerPoint slide or Google Slides to the YouTube video so you guys have access to it. But I am using his materials in order to create this um, other tutorial. Okay, you can kind of barely see it on the screen here. But the tutorial that I am following um, from Kudvenkat is um, just a, he uses a web ASPX, but it's a input enumerator, input a denominator, and then the result is displayed and then divide. But we've been using the Windows form environment, so I wanted to recreate this particular scenario using a Windows form. And so I've gone ahead and done that. I created a form, and that form just has the same format as the example. And I would watch the tutorial examples that he has. I wouldn't watch just mine. Um, both of them are going to be good to watch. So we just have a form, and I should rename that form properly. But the form is, um, it says enter a numerator, denominator. We're going to print some results. And if we take a look at the code behind here, um, I've just created uh, a, um, a divide method. And we're going to take the numerator and divide, uh, divide it by the denominator. And we want to be able to divide those two and to get a proper result. Now, right now, it's going to conduct integer division. So if we were going to error trap for um, double division, that would be a, a whole other program. Right now, I'm only, I'm only working with integer data types. And as you saw, we're also going to maybe test out the modulus to be able to throw an error as an example. So how did I create this? I just created a, a new project. I did a Windows form and I created um, a calculator and I, as you saw, I put those, um, oh my goodness, I put the controls, you know, a couple buttons and I got a couple text boxes, etc. on the form. I, and I'll be the first to admit right now that everything's not set up maybe exactly the way that I would like. For example, I always want to rename that form. So this is going to be our calculator because my purpose is mostly to get to this uh, unit testing example. So once I had the form set up and I was able to execute the form and I'm going to close my unit testing. Let's just run the form right now to see that it executes and that we can divide two integer numbers. And one of the reasons I'm using integers is I don't want to worry about round off error right now. Um, with doubles, but you actually saw that if you watched the other video, how you could um, test for round off errors with a, you can have a margin of error or a tolerance level. So if I take 20 and I divide it by 4 and I calculate the results are 5, exit button works, so the form works. So then what we need to do, if we go back to our Explorer menu, um, is we needed to add in a unit test. So I'm going to um, go ahead and model what I did before. I went and I added a new project. And when I created the new project, 
I named it calculator test, but we wanted to go to a test suite. We want it to be a unit test, and I'm going to name this um, calculator uh, unit test as just to have a little bit slightly different name, and I clicked OK. And the reason that I want to do that, a couple of things um, happened when I did this. One was, don't forget that you have to right click and then you have to add your uh, resource or reference, excuse me. So we need to link or add a reference and our reference should be to our under projects. We need to add the calculator and so we click OK with that. And then I created a test method in my other one where I was just going to create the uh, test the divide method. So I'm going to borrow that code and we'll talk about it here in just a minute. You can see the links to the YouTube here um, also. So I should only need this method. I'm going to copy it and go to our other class here and paste that method in. And when I f another couple of things is part of creating these unit tests is the this word unit test method in brackets before there is part of that um, template. So if you don't have that in there, it's not going to recognize it as a test. So you need to have that in there. Also, um, this is the template for any tests. Since I'm not using that, I'm just going to delete that out and then we'll use the bracket for that. Okay, so this is following the Arrange Act, and now I actually forgot what the um, oh the process was on our other one. Just a moment, and I will look that up. Okay, I glanced back at the other example. Um, I'm actually kind of new to this, so um, it uses the Arrange Act and Assert template. That's a pretty common template to use with unit testing. Um, for what I have been able to find. And so we're setting this up and all I did was on mine for my arranging I'm setting my expected value to be 5 if I take 20 divided by 4 my numerator is 20 my denominator is 4. And then I'm going to uh, get an integer value an actual value and I'm going to call on the calculator divide method and I'm going to send it the numerator and the denominator and then it should return um, the actual value. And because I'm dealing with integer um, division, I'm, I, the expected should meet the actual. I don't need to put in that third argument. Remember when we did the double uh, comparison that there was an expected delta value here. I don't have to put that in. So that's because I'm working with integers. Now, if you notice, there's an error message here. It says divide. And it says type form is not defined in an assembly that is not referenced or is defined in an assembly that is not referenced. You must add a reference to assembly system.windows.forms. So because I'm working with a forms object and not ASPS.ASPX, etc., or basically a, um, I'm not working with a HTML or a, I'm working with a form. Okay. I have to go back over, right click, and we have to add another reference. So I have to add that reference. That's what that error message means. And now this time it's an assembly. And if I remember correctly, I might not remember correctly what it is. I think it's a Windows Forms, System Windows, Windows Forms. I believe it was this one. So I'm going to click OK. And then it says that we should be good. Now another one thing um, when I was actually kind of working through this is you are working with the calculator class. So that's why it's using calculator.calculator.divide. So if I actually go back and look at that calculator class um, one more time here or the excuse me. If I go back and look at our um, calculator.cs um, it's in the namespace calculator and it's a calculator um, calculator class here. So I have a namespace calculator. So you'll see that naming convention that sometimes they'll do calculator NS to do the namespace. If I were to change this to calculator NS, I would have to, on my unit testing, in order to get that to work, I would then have to change that here, that it would be the namespace. 
I'm not sure in order to get that to pull up correctly. So you've got namespace first, then you've got the class, then you've got the method is is how this um, uh, those dots. So you got namespace shows you there, class, individual method. All right, so now last but not least, in order to get this to work, we need to go to the testing. We want to open up our test window, test explorer. On the test explorer, um, we're going to run all the tests. And right now, I actually have two test suites. I'm not sure how that's going to work. We're going to see what happens and go from here. I don't honestly know if it's calling from the calculator. Well, it's I believe it's running this the current one. There were build errors. So it might be because I have two test suites running the same thing. So let me investigate here just a moment. Okay, long story short, it was my renaming the calculator class here to a namespace um, when I... Um, was rewriting that code. Let's see if I can find it here. Remember I renamed this as calculator namespace or NS and then I had um, some errors that compounded because of that. So I ended up kind of redoing some stuff but it's basically the the same project. So when I run it now if I take a look at my um, test suite that I'm running, I'm running the divide and I've got the arrange act and then remember our model was to use the assert and this is still following the namespace um, and then the class and then the method. It's just the namespace here is named exactly the same. And so then when we go ahead and execute, I remember that we want to go to test windows and pull up the test explorer. And then we're going to run all of the tests that we have. This particular test will pass. Now, if I want to make that test fail, if I wanted to test to see if things were actually working correctly, so I get a I get a green bar and I get a check mark that it worked, I could go back into my program, excuse me, find the right file. I could go back in and I could change my division to a um, modulus division. I am sorry, I'm pulling up the wrong file. So if I change this to modulus division, which returns the remainder as an example, um, just to see that it's going to fail, and I run this test over here, I've now changed the definition of um, the divide method. So my test should fail in this case because the modulus returns the remainder, which would be zero in this case, and my expected value was going to be five. So it says that my test failed. So that gives you an example of where um, you can use a forms um, in order to set up your test suites. Pretty much kind of the same as the other one. I'm going to change that back so I don't forget. Um, but the basic is that once you have your project working, then you are going to need to right click over here on your project and you want to add a new class and that new project, actually a new project, and what you're going to add is a unit test project. When you get done doing that, you need to make sure then that you right click and you're going to add the appropriate references. The appropriate references are under projects. You'll have to select the project that you're on. And then we learned that if you're working with the Windows form, you're going to want to go down and use Windows forms. Okay. So that gives you at least another way to set up and practice a unit test. When you guys are doing this in class, you will have to use at least one unit test in a project and then um, develop some unit tests for an existing class, I believe.